I've been working in the cloud for as long as cloud existed, and I have been sharing my experience in the cloud world regularly with you for the past year or so on this channel. But it just hit me recently that I've never really shared with you how I was able to land my job as a senior solutions architect at AWS, the biggest cloud provider in the world. So getting in into AWS back in 2019, it wasn't a stroke of luck. It was actually a goal I started working towards four years earlier. I actually still remember when I purchased the classic Kraken, the coding interview book. And it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. I had my fair share of failures along the way. But today I will share the process I followed, the step-by-step -step system I used and you can use as well to land your dream job at Amazon, Microsoft, Google, or any other company. And since this is a learning process for me as well, I will go about some things I would approach differently if I had to start over. My name is Elias, I'm a senior solutions architect now let's oh wait, wait wait by the way i'm going to be sharing the resume template that got me the job at aws as well so stick around until the end yeah now you can roll the intro chapter one want it this might as well be the most important point in this video if you're unsure if you want to get into cloud computing it is actually very very easy to get demotivated but if you are positive that this is the career path for you, um, that will keep you motivated even through some of the challenges you might encounter as a beginner. Now, speaking of motivation, I wouldn't rely on motivation if I had to start over, to be honest. Motivation is not efficient at best because it fluctuates a lot, you know, depending on how good you slept the night before and, and whether you had your breakfast or not, you know, it's just not efficient. I would replace it with discipline. You know, I would have created a schedule for studying and I would just stick to it. But I digress. Now, more people are pursuing professions in tech more than ever. But when it comes to cloud computing, there's still a lot more demand than supply. So it's still an industry with a promising career outlook as businesses are in a race to adapt and improve on their technologies. I actually have made a video about the top five careers in the cloud of 2022. I left a link in the video description below so you can watch it after you finish this video. Now, your career goals as a beginner in this industry should be specific, but also should enable you to pivot if necessary because Getting to your goal is never going to be straightforward. Many of my colleagues actually have pursued careers in non-tech domains for years before pivoting to IT and working in a cloud provider. But it's never too early and it's never too late to begin planning your career aspirations. You know, being, being responsible for one's own actions goes a long way. I still write my objectives and I found that putting them down on paper helps me you know, clarify, it helps me have clarity about what I want to accomplish. Because it's easy to get stuck in the vague, I want to be successful mindset. But you gotta know what does being successful or being happy or being rich means for you specifically. For example, being rich for me means that I can travel first class and never even have to think about it. I just tried it once and it blew my mind. Anyway, my point is you gotta know your goals exactly. Is it joining a FANG company in whatever capacity? Is it becoming a manager in the company of your dreams? Is it becoming a solutions architect in a specific company? You just gotta know what you're working towards. Otherwise, it's like, it's like going to the gym with the goal of, I wanna be bigger, you know, bigger, slimmer, these things mean different meaning to different people. So you gotta put a number on it. You gotta be honest with yourself. Now, I'm not gonna tell you wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and stop procrastinating. You know, we all struggle with that shit every day. The bottom line is you gotta know exactly what you want. Now, number two, go the extra mile. Do what people are not willing to do. Write that documentation when no one is willing to. Find time to read that book when no one has time to. Write your unit tests when everyone cries, there is no time to do it and we gotta deliver fast. Take the time to write those unit tests. Take a few extra minutes to prepare for that upcoming meeting when 
everyone just shows up empty-handed, you know, and, and also follow up on those action plans when everyone else completely forgets about them after the meeting is done. And you know what? You unlock doors you didn't know even existed by becoming more valuable. Now, let me tell you something as someone who interviewed hundreds of people. Employers are searching for more than simply technical or hard skills. Over the past decade, discussions on leadership have been more focused on the soft skills that require to thrive in the workspace. But in reality, all it takes is a little effort. So don't forget, go the extra mile, your future self will thank you later. Chapter three. This is super important. You see, I, I didn't apply for the job at AWS. I was actually contacted by a recruiter. Whether you're new to cloud computing or, or already have a presence in the market, there is a lot to learn about building a brand. And I remember watching a video on YouTube about how to build a brand for your business. And I tried to apply its concept to myself as if I was a business. I redid my LinkedIn profile. I spent a couple of hours rewriting my description. I, I chose the groups I joined carefully. I chose the hashtags I want to target and other stuff I might get into also um, in future episodes. Let me know uh, if you're interested on how to position your social media presence in order to build a brand. But the bottom line is you do not have to be on social media sharing every instance of your life and commenting on every instant of someone else's. But your business, in this case, the professional you, must be on social media. A strong online presence is essential and can be used to establish credibility and continue to build your brand long after working for clients. Now, if you're still watching, if you're getting value from this video, please go ahead, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, I get this question a lot. What type of portfolio should I have? Or what should I put in my portfolio? Well, your brand is your business identity. And it's one of the most important ways to build a portfolio. It might sound complicated, I know, but it doesn't have to be. Here are three tips for building your brand. Number one, increase visibility. That's because when you're actively establishing a personal brand, you share material and you share ideas on a regular basis. Regular content sharing will raise your exposure in your selected network over time. It's not gonna happen overnight, but over time, it will happen. Number two, make a lasting impression. And because of your personal brand, you will come to mind the next time someone needs a cloud specialist or a security analyst, you know? Make yourself stand out from the crowd. Anyone can publish content and have an online presence, but only you have your own personal brand. No one can match that. And your personal brand is your chance to stand out. You know, it's how you'll connect with the people you want to interact with and, and how you will get recognized by your peers, which leads me to my next point. Number four, become an expert. <laughs> like many of you, I grew up watching fictional Hollywood movies, you know, and I've always been fascinated by those scenes where the Earth is facing an imminent threat and POTUS will send a helicopter to the house of an expert in geology, space, linguistics, or whatever, because they are the best in their field. So they get a military escort to the White House to join a task force working day and night to deliver us from evil aliens or Godzilla. Now, joking aside, those of us who reinvest in their personal and professional growth typically reap additional prospects for progress, you know, higher wages, for example, more job satisfaction, for example. Earning industry certification or joining a professional organization can help you learn new technology in your field and can also help you improve your career prospects. Now, back in 2018, I enrolled in a 2500 course at York University in Toronto. I took a few days off work. I traveled more than 500 kilometers from Montreal to Toronto. I booked an Airbnb near the university and I stayed there for over four days attending an accelerated course about Hyperledger Fabric, which is IBM's proprietary blockchain technology used by Walmart, used by Honeywell, used by Sony, used by other companies. By the end of the course, I took the exam to become a certified fabric developer. The whole trip cost me around $4,000 and a few days of work. But you know what? Those $4,000 
were well spent because that knowledge and that certification allowed me to negotiate a $20,000 salary increase with a startup I joined afterwards to work on their blockchain solution. Not bragging, I promised I'll share what I did, so I'm fulfilling my promise. So here's my advice for you. I want you to pick something and I want you to become an expert in it. It doesn't matter what it is, right? It can be sales, if you have a talent for it. It can be mobile application security. It can be repairing computers. It can be as specific as fixing the dials of a Seiko watches. Because guess what? When you become an expert in your niche, that's when good things happen. That's when you have all the leverage you need to negotiate your salary. And that's when POTUS sends a motorcade to escort you back to the White House. If you're just another React developer, and I have nothing against React, I, in fact, I'm really happy that finally the, J the JavaScript community seems to have settled on one framework. Um, I just picked a common technology to say that you won't have any leverage over millions of other React developers out there and thus you will become easily replaceable. So just keep the following in mind. Pick something, make it your Kung Fu and become the world expert in it or at least strive to become the world expert in that specific thing. And we get to the last chapter. Now, how can you ensure that your resume has the most impact? You know, you want your resume to reflect you properly at a glance. I want you to consider writing your CV for a tech job as if you were looking for a new book in the library. What do you do? You head straight to the bestseller section because you're looking for an exciting thriller. Right? A few titles will pique your curiosity, so you pick one up and you glare at the synopsis to see whether any of the books are worth purchasing. But sometimes you quit reading the first summary halfway through because nothing grabs your attention. Now, what you might not have understood was that the last sentence included a huge plot twist that would have completely compelled you to buy the book right away. And a resume is essentially the same. A recruiter may overlook your relevant abilities or work experience if you don't put them in the right places. I have been offering paid one-to-one -one sessions where I've helped many professionals already rewrite their resumes in order to get the job of their dreams. But I am going to show you my own resume, the one that got me the job at AWS. You know what? Without further ado, let's just go through it together. There's some stuff that I really want to highlight. So what I try to do in my own resume is highlight the achievements. Well, first of all, explain what I've done in that company and then highlight the achievements. Let's have an example. For this company, I explain what the company does. So at we build one of the biggest multimedia, real-time, and live streaming platforms in the world used by more than 3 million people across the world. And then I go into explaining my role into this company. So cloud architecture for highly available and scalable systems, defining and negotiating non-functional requirements, right? Hands-on research. So just I explain how do I fit in the picture? And then something I really, really, really want you to add is your achievements. You've been there for the company for three years, four years. What did you do? What did you achieve? It's not just about throwing some buzzwords in the resume. So I always add achievements, reproducible cloud infrastructure through infrastructure as code. Another thing that is achieved, I'm just going to choose something here, usage of serverless and cloud native tools to solve a variety of business and engineering problems. And then after that, only after that, I will list some of the technologies that I have worked on. So when the hiring manager is actually reading my resume, they know the company, I've gave them an explanation of what the company does, then my role in the company, what, did, what do I do, and then what I achieved. And this is a strong, this is a powerful psychological effect because when the hiring manager reads that you have achieved 99.99 availability, they implicitly think, oh, they were able to achieve this, they can do this with us as well. Sometimes you can even include things like I cut the cost or I helped or I was part of the team that helped cut in the cost of this product by 50%. Now the hiring manager will read this and will think, oh, then they might be able to reproduce the same thing in my company. So this is pretty much how I build my resume. A ton of people I interview are smart people. They work on solving real concrete examples and yet they fail to showcase this in their resumes. They will just 
writes that they know Node.js or they know PHP or they know Spring. Those are tools. So what we're looking for is actually what did you achieve and what can you bring to the company? Keep that in mind. And then at the end, I would always include my certifications. I think these are super important to include if you have them because during this screening process, when the hiring manager sees that, for example, I am a certified Kubernetes administrator, they know that I can speak this common language with people in their company who, are, who have the same certification so we can understand each other, I can bring value from day one. So that by itself, it just it brings more confidence. It gives them more confidence that you are the right person. After that, I will go to education and then list a little bit my interest. And as you can see here, one of my interests is the YouTube channel that you guys are watching. And so you can see how I am super grateful for you to be watching the video, to be following me on this journey. You can see clearly that it helps me tremendously, even in my day-to-day -day job. And that's pretty much it. Let's go back. Now, if you want to start a career in the cloud, you might be wondering which certification to take. And I have the best recommendation for you. I go through which certificate to get for which job based on your background. So make sure to check the video out. I will leave a link in the video description below as well. Thank you all for watching. My name is Elias. See you in the next one. Peace out.